first place along the entire digestive tract is traditionally the mouth. So let's start there. The mouth is also known as the oral cavity or buccal cavity. The functions of the mouth include sensation, you feel things with your mouth, mastication, which is chewing, chemical digestion, swallowing, as well as speech and respiration. There are some components we have to be aware of that make up the structures of the mouth. We have the cheeks and lips, the tongue, as well as the teeth. The cheeks and lips are like the goalies of a hockey game. It keeps things in play. The cheeks and lips are going to keep the food inside the mouth as well as push it back between the teeth. So as you're chewing, it keeps it from falling out of your mouth as well as kind of keeps it between the teeth, which is where you need for mastication. The cheeks and lips are also important for speech as well as blowing and sucking. The tongue is a muscle. It moves the food between the teeth. So as you're chewing, num, 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 the tongue is constantly moving things back to the teeth, turning them around, pushing them back to the teeth. It also deals with sensory. This is where you taste your gustation. Okay, This is how you taste. It helps with your speech. It also helps propel food down the throat in the form of a bolus. So as you're chewing up your food, your tongue also acts like a catapult. It's going to help you shove the food down your throat for swallowing. The anterior two-thirds of the tongue is called the body. This is found in the oral cavity. It's attached to the floor of the mouth by something called the lingual frenulum. The posterior one-third of the tongue is called the root. Next up are your teeth. Collectively, the teeth are known as your dentition. You have baby teeth and you have adult teeth. Your baby teeth are known as deciduous teeth baby teeth, otherwise known as milk teeth, and there are 20 total. Then you get your permanent teeth, otherwise known as your adult teeth, and those are 32 total. And by the way, numbers sometimes show up on your exam, so be sure to memorize how many baby teeth somebody has, as well as how many adult teeth somebody has. And believe me when I say this, it's easier to memorize the number than to sit in the test and do this. I've had to do that. Anyhow, let's move on to the types of teeth. In this graphic, you can see we have different types of teeth. We have what we call incisors. These are your cutting teeth. Your canines, these are your puncturing and shredding teeth, also very popular with the vampires. We have the premolars, which are crushing and grinding teeth. And we have our molars, which are also crushing and grinding teeth. Teeth, of course, have to have some anatomy to them. So we have things that are based on their arrangement to the gum. Okay, you've got the gum line. Depending on where the, the tooth is on the gum determines the region that we call it. So for example, we have the crown, which is the portion of the tooth that is above the gum. The neck, which is where the crown and the part below it meet, the root. And of course, the root, which is the portion below the gum line. Other structures to know on the teeth include the dentin, which is a hard yellowish tissue. It's connective tissue. We have enamel, and we have cementum, which is connective tissue. Within the tooth, we have things like the pulp cavity, and the surface area where the teeth come together is called the occlusion. So we have the occlusal surface. Finally, we have something called mastication, We're talking about chewing here. In the skeletal muscle videos, in the muscular system videos, we took a look specifically at the muscles of mastication. So if you need to go look those up, that's where you'll find those. Mastication is basically the process of breaking food into smaller pieces. What occurs here is that by chewing the food, we're exposing more of the food to digestive enzymes. Next is saliva, otherwise known as spit. The saliva has a very important job. It's going to help moisten the food as well as help inhibit bacteria growing in the mouth. It is the first digestive enzyme that food will encounter. It kind of sort of starts the digestion process of starch. And there's other things more powerful, but saliva begins some of the process on the digestion. It will lubricate the food, allowing you to swallow it easier. If it doesn't lubricate, it's going to be like swallowing pieces of chalk. So the saliva helps to lubricate the food so you can get it down your food tube even better. And no, we're not going to leave it at food tube. We'll get into an entire video on what the food tube technically is called. And the saliva finally comes from the salivary glands. 
The salivary glands are the glands that are going to produce the saliva. You have things like the parotid gland, which is anterior in front of the earlobes. The submandibular gland, it's found around halfway along the body of the mandible, that's your jawbone. And the sublingular gland, which is on the floor of the mouth. In our next video, as I promised, we're going to take a closer look at what we mean by food tube.